Hey, hey, welcome back. I'm back on Sundays. Mm, dare I say, I'll be back on Sundays from now on. <laughs> I have missed my bangles, honey. You know, because at work I can't wear all this on my arms, honey. But we are back. We are back like we never left. And we about to get into how I plan to retire in the next six years or over the next six years. Like what I'm going to be doing to like get to that process, you know, get into that process of doing that. But yes, I am back on Sundays. I don't have coffee this morning. It's about in the afternoon. It's 1230. I have my water. Um, I'm recording a little late today because um, last night while I was driving home, I had to work yesterday. We had a merchant band competition. I had to work. So on my way home last night, I was not very far from home, but I ran over something and my tires started leaking air. So of course this morning it's fully flat. And so I'm just here at home, honey. But I got dressed for y'all today, y'all. I got dressed. Can you tell that my favorite accessory are earrings? These came from Walmart. And I forgot what brand it was. It was like a New York City but it was like a brand, like a specific brand, like a clothing brand. And, um, but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, these is it. Yeah. So anyhow, we're going to get into how I'm preparing to retire over the next six years. And I remember watching this girl on YouTube. She has a candle company. I believe it's a candle business. And she makes like these candles that are like, uh, that look like food. Um, they look like food. I don't remember the name of her channel, but they're either like sundaes or some type of ice cream like food. And she makes candles. And so she was talking about, um, before she quit her job, she was talking about how she wanted to work her business full time, but that she was started doing all this research because she didn't want to just quit her job because she was making a certain income in her candle business because there were there are other things like to take care of. Like, of course, when you're working a full time job, your um, company is like paying half of like that insurance, you know, like we pay a portion and they pay a portion and things like that. So there were those were things that she needed to like think about before she decided to quit her job to run her candle business full time. Now, she also had a family. She had a husband and a daughter and so her husband was already um, self-employed like he was already an entrepreneur so he was already like running his business full-time um, but she was still working and building her candle business but they also have a daughter and so when you have kids you know like I mean they were a young couple so of course they may not have felt like they needed health insurance but once you have kids you definitely need health insurance and so she started doing all this research ahead of time she was like well how can I make sure that when I quit my full-time job, we have, like, we're not still, like, on the hook for, like, a lot of expenses? So I think, I don't know if she got rid of one of her cars or she paid off a car, but she decided to get rid of that payment. And then she did some healthcare research to find out what was best for them because they were a family of three. And so, of course, her and her husband can both um, put in for that. But she was just trying to figure out because I think because she had the full-time job, she was carrying the health insurance for the family. So she had to do that type of research, too. So when I watched that video, and I watched that video maybe a couple years ago, but that video came back to mind when I started thinking about, well, how am I going to plan to retire in six years? So for those of you that don't know, I'm 49 right now. And I plan to retire from 9 to 5 work at the age of 55. So when I say retire, it doesn't mean I don't want to bring in income anymore. But I want to be like working for myself or like setting my own schedule, like not punching a clock. Like I don't punch a clock, but they clock you. They clock you. I don't punch a clock, but they clock in. What you doing? But I want to work for myself. I want to have, I want to just, you know, set my own schedule, wake up when I want to. And of course, if you have customers and things, you're kind of at their beck and call, but still, I get to set the boundaries, right? I get to set like what I want to do. And so, um, so yeah, so in six years, I want to retire. And I'm like, I can't just keep saying I want to retire. I actually have to like put things in place, right? So today, there are seven things. I made a list of seven things that I'm going to do. Of course, I have my notes here. Y'all know because I will get to talking. But I have seven things that I'm putting into place now. This is not like my final 
like if I do all these things that I'm going to be set to um, to retire in six years because things have to grow and develop, right? And so um, this is just where I'm starting. Of course, this list I I might have to manipulate, you know, over the years to you know some of the things I might want, I might think I want to do, I might not want to do later. But the goal is to set up my life like the life I want to live, right? Not the life that I'm living by somebody else's, you know, you have to work, you know, I don't know, like this oppressive, and I'm not oppressed, I don't feel oppressed or depressed, but I don't always want to work for somebody else for the rest of my life. I want to be in control of how I, you know, bring in finances, how I earn money, when I do it, you know, I just want to do things that I like. <laughs> Thankfully, I have a job now that I like, but I'm still, you know, on somebody else's schedule. And I get real spoiled over the summer. I really do. I really feel like I, I have things under control and then school starts and so up, oh, you're back on somebody else's schedule again. But let me see. All right, let's get started. So, oh, and at the end, you guys know that I have... Um, become like what is it called a YouTube partner I don't know what it's called like when YouTube start paying you for you know I start making money for YouTube so anyway at the end I'll share what I've made so far as a YouTuber um, yeah I'll do that at the end so first you guys know that right now I'm working through Dave Ramsey's total money makeover I do plan on going through all the steps and I hope to get through those steps in these six years and so I'm on baby step number two, which is the debt snowball. And right now my car is my remaining debt. And that is $10,313 that I have left to pay. I think my next payment is due. Today is the 6th. I'll pay my next payment this week, probably this Friday. I'll pay it. And so um, that'll be my next payment. I have not yet. If you watch my last video, I have not yet. Um, figured out how to really like get on top of like really making like extra payments because um, I don't think I don't make a whole nother car payment like in my other paycheck so I get two paychecks a month so in one month I have scheduled to pay $355 towards my car but in my next paycheck that's where, where I pay rent and so I don't have the extra $355 but I am making extra money but that's going to end in two weeks um, because marching band will be finished and so I don't I won't have like that extra I might get a little extra because I think on Mondays I still work but that's just one hour which is fine and so somebody did in the comments uh, for my last video suggest like well, how about just save, like once you save $355, then, then make that extra payment. That is actually something that I am thinking about doing. It's just making sure that that stays in the forefront. Because the only savings account I have right now is just my the one where my emergency fund is. So yes, I could put in $355 and then once I have $355, like make an extra payment. I can do that and I might do that because I do want to be done. I get, Instead of... Um, paying my car off by December of this year, which I don't think that's gonna happen. It's my goal is for spring break, so that's March of 2025. So that's where I am with that debt. Um, so yeah, so the next thing, so after I pay off my car, that's step number one. Step number two is to say six months of expenses, which is technically baby step number three. Um, so say three to six months of expenses in a fully funded emergency fund and for me that is roughly $1,822 a month. So there are things that I've increased in that budget to make it really comfortable for me. So I my goal is to save um, six months of expenses. So that is my goal. And so um, that is $1,822 a month. I increased my food budget from 300 a month to 500 a month. And then, um, so that would make six months of savings for me would be $10,932. So um, once that's fully funded, and, and that's really because I don't really have a lot of household expenses, that might change if I decide to purchase my own property, right? So right now, if I stay in this apartment, everything stays as is, 
my six months of savings would just be $10,932. That is not a lot, especially if I do venture off and get my own place. And then I have to think about um, like utilities and like dub more than double the rent that I pay right now, like different things like that. And so the, and the, those expenses would be without a car note, right? Because all of my debts would be paid off. So that would be without a car note, there's no student loan, like any of those types of debts. There's no credit cards, nothing like that. So that's without any debt, right? So we'll get into the car thing. So that would mean my monthly expenses would be my tithe is $340. Personal maintenance is $120. Plant fitness is $10. Groceries, $500. Gas is $160. Cell phone is $55 a month car insurance is 120 dollars that cell phone might change too because i it, do plan on getting an iphone at the end or after volleyball season is over because i'm going to use the money i make for volleyball to purchase an iphone but i'm going to buy the phone outright so that my um monthly just my like the cell phone service is stays lower um my car insurance would be 120 dollars a month rent is 500 uh, video merger, that's what I used to edit my videos, is $3. Actually, I didn't even use it this past time. I ended up downloading CapCut because for whatever reason, video merger wasn't even working for me. So that little $3 I might get rid of. Canva is $15. You guys know I did add that subscription back to my, um, my uh, budget again. Um, and so that totals out to eight one thousand eight hundred twenty-two dollars and sixteen cents. So that six months of that would be ten thousand nine hundred and thirty-two dollars. So that's where we are with that. So step number two is to save six months of monthly expenses, which is technically baby step number three. So my step number three is, which is baby step number four, is to invest fifteen percent of my income towards my retirement fund. So. My retirement fund, I have retirement through work, right? So there's Social Security that I can't start collecting on until I'm 67 at this point. And who work until they're 67, honey? Um, so we have a retirement fund. And they, so there's, I have to talk about it more because there's a lot of people that work talking about the, the retirement fund. But there's a portion there's a time in your career where you become fully vested and I think that's 10 years I think and I think I should hit that 10 years in six years this is my fourth year if I have to work one extra year so that I can be fully vested then I will do that um that's where I am. That I don't know enough about it to even keep elaborating about it. But <laughs> my retirement fund, so I'm going to invest 15% of my paycheck. So what I'll do is I just set up. So after my, um, what do you call it? My um, emergency fund is fully funded with the $10,000. Then I can have at work, like there's this form you fill out, and I can just ask them to take an additional 15% off of my check before I get paid. And so that'll just go into that retirement fund. Um, and so that's step number three, invest 15% of my income towards my retirement fund. And then step number four, um, which in the total money makeover, step number five is to save for your children's college fund. I don't have children, so during that step, I'm going to save for and purchase a new car. And so my goal is to save $10,000 and buy a car cash. And so it'll definitely have less miles. I think I'm up to 110,000 miles on this car, and it's, do, it's doing it. It's doing it for me. Like, I'm not, I have no complaints. Like, I got a flat last night, but that's not like an engine issue or a transmission issue or anything like that. So I'm grateful for that. Um, so I did have extra money in this check, but apparently that extra money now is going to be getting a new tire. And you know when you get one new tire, you have to get two. I can't just buy one new tire, even though this tire, I just bought it in like February, March. I think they're gonna make me get a new tire anyway, just because, and they might rotate it to one of the back tires or something, but they're gonna make me buy two. 
So that will be that extra 200 and some odd dollars that I have left over from my paycheck. So there goes that extra. But I'm glad to have extra and I don't have to dip into my emergency fund, you know. And so, like, I'm not even mad at it. It's like I have the money to get it done. It's just inconvenient. So uh, my brother's going to change it and put the donut on because I don't have a spare. I have a donut. So he's going to put that on. And then tomorrow morning, I'll just take the half day from work and go to discount tires and have them switch it. Um, Walmart is open today. If he gets it done earlier, if he changes it early enough, I'll see if Walmart can do it. Um, and then I don't have to miss work, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. I'm not rushing him to do it because he works overnight and so he's sleeping. So I'm not in a rush. Um, let me see. So I'm going to save for and purchase a new car. That's my step number four. And I plan on doing $10,000. I don't know what kind of car that, that's going to be. I would prefer to get like an SUV. Um, so we'll see. But whatever it is, I don't want a car payment. Um, and I just want to pay the insurance. Of course, if I get an SUV, my insurance will go up. Whatever my car is, the insurance could change. So that's going to change to what my... Um, it might change to what my the expenses that I save, but I'll just keep track of that along the way. And then my step number five, which I don't, I know nothing about, is to save towards purchasing an investment property. I don't know how much I need to save. And I've been looking, so I watched a guy's video. His name is Prosper G. He has a video about how he was looking for investment properties. And um, and so I was watching that video and I was like, oh, that's a good idea. I should start looking now just to kind of see like what's out there. And one of the things I've learned is that I don't necessarily want something that I have to fix up. Like I don't want to manage any construction. I don't want to do any of that. I would prefer to get something newer or something ready to move in. Um, like a duplex uh, most of the time when I look up duplexes like because right now I'm just using like Zillow like those little um, those like apps or whatever those websites that just show you what's available to purchase and a lot of times if you put in duplex it's like you can buy one duplex but not necessarily the other like I want both like I want the full thing so that maybe maybe I can live in one and rent out the other. But whatever it is, I want it like ready, like a live in, like ready to live in. Like I don't know, maybe some minor updates or some minor changes, but nothing like where, I, you know, we have to strip it to the bare bones and build it back up. And, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily think I want to do that. Um, but again, I don't know enough about it. I've been looking for some like classes um this one man was hosting like a workshop but the day he was hosting the workshop i had to work it was a saturday this was like during the summer when the marching band had started and everything so i wanted to go because it was like right near me and not near me but like 30 minutes away but i wanted to go to the workshop to just kind of see like what the steps are in order to start doing that so again that's something that i might get into might not get into um, just based on like how much it would cost. I don't necessarily like I want to be able to put down as much cash as possible so that um, if the tenant doesn't pay and I'm not looking for tenants that don't pay. I don't want to be in the hood. I don't I don't I don't want to get property in like I just don't I want to attract a certain type of tenant. Um, and anybody could not pay. Right, it doesn't mean like anybody could not pay, but in the event that somebody doesn't pay, I want to be able to manage in covering that cost easily. So I I have friends who are in real estate, and so I can definitely talk to them about it and like see what's out there, see what the process is. I would be a first time home buyer, and so we'll see. And I don't have to necessarily. I could just do one, but like I'm one, I mean, you make a little bit of money and I should, and I might just get one, just buy one condo or one duplex to just see what it's like to be a landlord and kind of manage that. And so I might do that, but in these six years, I plan on at least getting one rental property. Uh, and there, there's this man on YouTube and I think um, Sean Cannell from Think Media he interviewed him. I need to find that interview because he 
um, he's saying, like the point of his channel is get rich one property at a time. And so I'm gonna go back, research that, listen to that interview and kind of just see where to start because I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start. So that's something I may or may not get into. I would love to get into it, but we'll see how that goes. Um, step six would be, and not necessarily in that order, but I need to research healthcare options and costs. And so from my research thus far, I could be paying up to $700 a month in health insurance. And so for me personally, as a 49 year old woman, there are doctor's appointments that we as women need, you know. Um, also, I, I was diagnosed with asthma years ago, so I do take medications monthly. There's three, one, two, three medications that I purchase monthly um, to help control my asthma. And so um, paying for those medications outright are like $300 each, like $300 plus each. And so obviously paying $700 a month is still cheaper than buying those medications outright. Um, so yeah, so I'll be looking into that, um, probably putting money aside for that, just making sure step number seven happens, which is to build multiple streams of income. And so, so far, I've set some goals about where I want to start building multiple streams of income, and one of those was YouTube. Um, and so that has happened for me. I do have income coming in from YouTube. Now, I'm not rich over here. <laughs> so far, it's almost undetectable in my account. <laughs> not really, but a little bit. So you guys know that I got monetized in July. I believe it was July 25th of this year. I got monetized, so I earned a little bit in that little last week of July, and then I earned money in August. And so at the end, I'll tell you guys what those numbers were. Um, but I did achieve the goal of uh, monetizing my YouTube channel. I did um, set up some affiliate links. Those will always be in the description. Um, so I have my affiliate link so far on my cash wallet, um, the digital coin, the digital bank, the coin counter bank. Um, what else do I have? I've got my Yeti, my coffee mug in there just because I love Yeti. And um, what else is it? Oh, the Dave Ramsey Total Money Makeover, the updated version is in there as an affiliate link. And now those are in the descriptions. Um, so I've gotten that started. I've only made pennies, <laughs> I think. Um, and they haven't paid me out because you have to make, I think the threshold is $10 and I have not made $10. So I only set those up probably a month ago. And so we'll just see how that goes. I don't know that I have a strategy on getting people to click on the links or purchase the things, you know, so we'll see. I have to learn more about that, but it's set up. Um, and I know for Amazon, and it's through Amazon, it's the Amazon Affiliate League Program. What do they call it? Amazon Associates? Let me see. I think it's called Amazon Associates. Uh, Amazon Affiliate. Uh, Amazon Associates, that's what it's called. So I think this month so far I've made 45 cents. A dollar eighty-seven over the last thirty days. <laughs> so that's where we are. That's where we are. So I don't really know. No, I I just did it on the suggestion of um, when I went on the Think Media. They had like a they had an interview or whatever, and so she the girl analyzed my channel and was like, I don't know why you're not using affiliate links. Da, da, da. So I did put it on there, but I definitely need to learn more about it to figure out how to you know, um, get people to click on those or whatever if I want to use that as a, um, like a viable stream of income, I should say. So what else? Um, and then I did go take the test to get my state license for interpreting. Y'all know, I don't, I'm not expecting anything good to come out of that. <laughs> this time but I do plan on taking this and retaking it next year I have not gotten results yet y'all but I, I could see the writing on the wall 
and I don't believe I passed it. <laughs> so I want to earn my state license for interpreting. So that allows me to pick up freelance work. So I could work freelance. So I, that means I can pick up what I want to pick up. I don't have to like every day work somewhere eight to three, nine to five. I don't have to do that. It also, um, so it gives me the opportunity to work in the community, which I can like set my schedule how I want to set my schedule. Um, but I don't know that I want to do that. I don't know. I don't know that I want to do that because that's too much like work. You know, I want to not feel like I'm working, working. You know what I mean? Like, because, maybe because that's what I do now and because I don't have any control over it. You just interpret where they tell you to interpret. I mean, there are things that I pick up, of course, after school, and that's fine. But right now, it sounds too much like work. However, that license is valuable because anytime I feel like I need to go back into the workforce, I can. Um, so that, that's where I'm starting. That is how I'm preparing. Um, the multiple streams of income is really what I need to end in the saving money. So, um, so yeah, so I really need to be more anal about my paychecks, more um, diligent about where I say I'm putting money. And I do think that I did tell you guys, I think in the last video, some goals that I had, but um, I do need to be more diligent about where that money is going, what I'm doing with it, um, not just buying here and there, you know, swiping here and there because I have extra money in the account. That's still a habit I need to break. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so let's get into the YouTube earnings. Oh, this video isn't that long. I'm at 26 minutes right now. Perfect. So um, my YouTube earnings so far. So I got monetized July 25th. So of course, by the end of July, I hadn't met that $100 threshold. And so I had to wait until August. So by the end of August, um, all together with July and August together, my um, YouTube, my first YouTube payout was $252.63 and so then so you know like so whatever my August um, earnings are you don't get paid until September like the week of September 21st like the 21st through the 26th they give you like a window of when you get paid so you get paid for the previous month the following month and so I got paid two hundred and fifty-two dollars and sixty-three cents. Yay! My first YouTube payout. Uh, I, of course, you know, I tithe off of it. Don't ask me what I did with the rest. Um, and then September's pay that I will get this month. Um, September is one hundred and nineteen dollars and fifty cents. So September, you guys know, like once I started back to work and it was like full force, I put out very few videos and so the month of September I only put out six videos that month so $119.50 I mean it is what it is um, and most of those were vlogs I think because it's it was just easier to just vlog while I'm out and about during the day but historically my vlogs don't get as much um, views as my like these types of sit down videos and that's fine I still enjoy vlogs there are a portion of my viewers who also enjoy vlogs and so I like to do them and so those will still be going so my plan going forward to just increase that YouTube revenue is to um, I like these Sunday sit down videos these are like my total money makeover updates um, you guys can follow that journey um, on these Sunday videos and then on Wednesday is my vlog you can see my week leading up to today um, last week I did not vlog um, I did not vlog. I took the week off just to kind of regroup, figure out what I needed to do because um, I definitely needed to get some of these other videos up. And then Saturday mornings are like my how-to videos. Like in those videos, the goal for those is like um, things that people can search. Like I did a video about like how to budget by paycheck. I did a video about like how to catch up on your bills. Things like that that over the years if people like search it on YouTube or like it asks, it answers a question like um, how to catch up on your bills, how to budget by paycheck, how to have fun while budgeting, like 
you know, different things like that that my, people might be looking for on YouTube for years to come. So those are the goals with those. And so, um, so my goal this um, month is to definitely increase more than six videos. Hopefully three a week would be great. I'm already behind because last week I only did one video. And so if I do Sunday, Wednesday, and Saturday, that'll be my three for the week and things like that and just kind of you know just keep that momentum going and it'll be easier once the um, end of October comes because marching band season will be finished and of course I'll just have more time period in my schedule um, I won't have those Wednesday nights I won't have those um, Saturday all days and so Things hopefully will settle down enough for me to put a lot more emphasis back into YouTube because that's really where I would like to see a lot of growth. Um, I would love for it to replace my income and for it to replace my income, I would have to make $200 a day, $202 a day to replace my income. And so just working on how to earn, where where I can earn $202 a day. So. Those are just things, these are just things that I'm starting to think about now that it's like, you have six years to get this done. And so this, this is just where I am in the process that could change, things down the road could change. Like, we don't know, we don't know. Somebody might marry me. Like, not that I won't still be on this journey, but it might change some things. But anyhow, Thank you guys for watching. Check out those affiliate links. Christmas is coming, honey. You might want to purchase for some family. Um, <laughs> and so I don't know if you guys noticed, I started uh, like doing like a daily feature video, like to just increase views. Um, and, it, and I'm changing the thumbnails as I'm doing it. So I don't want y'all to be confused that like, that I'm like recording new videos that often. They are just older videos that because I've had a lot of new subscribers, um, hey, here are some videos to check out kind of thing. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. I always appreciate your comments. Um, I have not been as diligent as getting back to you guys as I'd like to be, but I'm gonna get back on track with that. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you and I will see y'all next week.